There is, because what we're doing is going from the moon in part, actually from full darkness, the moon in part, to the full moon. And this is why the moon, it's very, it's an extraordinary uh, adventure, because it is about these qualities from absolute darkness into the awakening of light, into, into illumination. And it's a cycle, because what the, the moon is also telling us is that the solar aspect, the inner perceiver within us, is not something that, it's like biorhythms, that basically the, the, the moon goes through the cycles of darkness into to light, into full light, back into darkness, saying that the qualities and conditions of consciousness as well are continually in this metamorphosis. They're not stationary. We don't pass go and go, now I'm enlightened, I'm always this, I'm always that. This is why in, in tradition where it says an avatar, which is a god in human form, is only an avatar when it calls upon that quality of consciousness. In other words, that, that these are essentially uh, almost what you call strong radio signals, and that one is constant, but it's always conditioned by the weather of life. But the weather of life is also, if we think about it very interestingly enough, a creative weather, meaning that the realization is it's not translating another realm into this realm, like a carbon copy of something, but actually that everything dissolves from, let's say, a greater quality of mind to recombine into this context so that as it grows, as it goes through these qualities of sequence and duration, of cycle and time, it, like the process of gestation, can carry through these, these uh, periods more and more of its own greater self-informing. So that, that we can't just sort of arrive. That would be, this is why you can't just come here on a spaceship and stay. You have to quite literally wear the skins of the qualities and conditions with, of which that world is woven, which is part of the great art experiment that this human consciousness is. We wear these ancient qualities, and as they are triggered now, they will more and more begin to uh, inform us and we will, it will increase our inner standing of our perception of things. And this is why, as we go from the changing of the moon and the context of cycles and times, here we move to the sun, and really we start to understand, because this is where we start to also see a bit of what the implication of the alchemical wedding actually will uh, reveal for us, is that we see the moon up here again. She's setting off the tone, and from her journey, and again, she's holding a sphere, from her journey of wholeness or holiness and because every aspect and stage of life is not the one you're trying to get away from even if you're trying to get away from it it's not getting to the true truth everything has like the the, the keys of the arcana they have a unique note a unique quality and they stimulate unique conditions as our consciousness matures and grows and becomes more self-informing and that's why this figure is falling down into time, and we start to see the sun figure. Now, notice how this sun is, he is, first of all, his hands are in the, the sign of a benediction. This is showing us that life is a blessing, not a crucifixion, and that we are bound to the cross of time by the serpent of time and eternity. And we start to see how the one serpent has scales and the other is smooth. This starts to tell us the one with the scales has to do with time and differentiation and the currents <laughs> of evolution. The white serpent, essentially, the unscaled, is the qualities of timelessness. And if we think about time, it is countervailed by timelessness. In other words, it is always about the polarity or contrast that in this case, which is very interesting because this is all about having learned how to use the energies of consciousness in a co-participatory way. Rather than fighting or struggling against them, this is showing actually a duality of consciousness. Now what's very interesting is that, that I, you know, when I was working on the tarot, I, sometimes I would be in a terror because I'd, I'd had, an, and I thought, what am I gonna, how can I express these things? And, I, and the sun was one where I was really very stuck, I'd done sketches, that, and then finally the Vitruvian man of Leonardo just came into my consciousness. And so I started drawing just to see what would happen, and what was fascinating was that in that image of Leonardo, you have the man moving, and his face looking directly out. And this is really about 
uh, man being the measure of all things, and that he, through reason and ratio, can understand the context of his world. So Vitruvian man was really the Renaissance model of the qualities of consciousness through their own self-determination could become the hub and purveyor of life experience and life perception. What the sun here teaches us, because this takes that image uh, a bit deeper, is that we see the second visage here. We see another face emerging and looking up. And yet the, one, the other face, the, the, the earlier face, is still looking out into the world of time and experience. And this duality is what is extremely important. And this duality is also what the moon uh, creates within the sun, the capacity to be both moved upon uh, by outward events and qualities that affect the eye and time, and yet to be receptive to the qualities that move inwardly and truly move upon one sensually, energetically, and not as something fixed, but rather as something that grows. And this is why you start to see the feet. His feet, as you can see, are on the cube of space, meaning the, the, the four directions, the qualities of manifest consciousness. And his feet, now everything has to do also with, with again, astrology uh, dictating or, or ruling different aspects of the physiology. Now the feet also belong to Pisces, the moon. And basically you can make a very interesting argument about that, that it's really knowing where one stands and how one stands and the movement of the feet that give the sense of a mobile consciousness. Because a lot of times, again, as I'm saying, the feet, Pisces, the moon in Pisces, the feet. He's standing now upon the foundation of the realization it's not solid ground because what has she brought to him? He's also standing simultaneously on the water and on the earth. He's realizing that he is a living quality of consciousness, not simply a fixed abstraction of consciousness, not the, not the mind separated from the body, but truly the, inhab the, the habitation of mind and body. And this is where we start to see his arms that are free here and his legs that are free connect him to, to the, the water and earth. And lo and behold, his open arms become a chalice. He becomes open and receptive <coughs> to the qualities of the inward sun, and yet is able to focus them because he willingly, as an act of blessing, accepts the role of being bound to the cube of space and the cross of time, not as punishment, not as, as a vindictive God sentencing him to time on prison planet Earth, but actually as an artist of consciousness that can hold both the form and finally through maturation as a holding the form to hold the fullness. And this is where we start to see the mystery of the grail, the revelation of the chalice, and why each of us as human beings are the development in our consciousness of becoming a worthy chalice, a worthy grail, a worthy son. And isn't it interesting that these are worthy sons born of creation. And this is the sun we are talking about, not just S-O-N, but S-U-N. And we are all <coughs> sons of consciousness in this regard. Sons, S-U-Ns. And that's why we are looking, as Jung was saying, that the male and female aspects of consciousness are intrapsychic principles. We see them in gender and we see them in differences between people, but we have to, for our understanding, Take as the alchemist did, the left side of the body is the feminine, the right side, the masculine, the solar hand and the lunar hand. Now these two might think they're not doing anything, but actually what they're trying to do is of course come together. And they're uniquely then what? Creating a chalice, a circuit, a wheel, you see? So what we're doing then is coming full circle. And this is why you start to see how the inward wheel, air, earth, fire, and water, and then the outward wheel, the zodiacal houses, notice that they're spinning in different directions. That the, 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 the pull of time is a pull toward. The pull of eternity is a pull away. We are born between two gravities, and we are beckoned by these two gravities. And for much of our life, we think we have to respond to one or the other gravity. And what the sun is telling us is, no, you are born of centrifugal and centripetal forces. And as the great mystic Jakob Burma once put it, the, the first principle he said was anguish. 